The research that Kunkel and Gantz conducted was focused on four main research questions. And it's the first two that we're gonna focus on for this semester. Now, for the answering the first question, um, Kunkel and Gantz looked at actual time. They looked at percentages of content, but they also looked at how much time is dedicated to each of these things. Um, public policy since then has created a limit on the amount of advertising during children's programming to no more than 12 minutes per hour on weekdays and 10.5 minutes per hour on weekends. So we're just gonna look at the types of advertising and the types of non-program content as a percentage rather than looking at the actual time. And we're also gonna look at the types of products that were advertised. So let's look at how Kunkel and Gantz did their study and what are the key findings as it relates to our own work. First, what was their sample? They recorded children's television programs from seven different sources. Three broadcast networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. Two independent broadcast stations per city, and they did um, several different cities. And two basic cable channels, Nickelodeon and the USA Network. Five hours of television were recorded each day of the week and only those shows identified as produced primarily for children between the ages of 2 to 12 years were used. As a result, they ended up with 604 hours of children's programming. 604 hours! Can you imagine? Previous studies only have about 60 to 80 hours worth of programs. So this is one reason why this particular study is so important and that we're reading it even though it's from 1992 and things have changed quite a bit in the children's television landscape. So what did they find? What types of content were shown in the non-program breaks and what was being advertised? First, looking at the different types of non-program segments, program advertisements made up the most time of all the non-program content. That is, most of the non-program time when children were watching television was filled with commercials for products. Other types of non-program content include program promotions, station identification, public service, public service announcements, and educational drop-ins. So what are those types of things? Well, we all know what a commercial is, right? A marketing message with an intention to sell a product or a service. A television promotion is a marketing message that's intended to promote a television program. So it could be um, kind of a message about upcoming episodes or, you know, don't forget to watch the next show at seven. A PSA is a health, safety, or educational me message that's created by a nonprofit, which is slightly different than the educational drop-in. The educational drop-in is a similar kind of message, but it's created by the network or the channel. So like NBC does a lot of those, the more you know, that would be considered an educational drop-in versus, you know, fire safety, which is um, created by a nonprofit. A network or station ID is a brief message intended to identify the network or station that's being watched. So things like, you're watching Fox 19 would be a station ID. So of all these types of non-program content you might find in the commercial breaks in children's shows, the most common is the product advertisement. No surprise, right? So now the question is that in those advertisements, what is being advertised and how? For commercials, six basic groupings of categories of products were identified by um, Kunkel and Gantz. Toys, cereal, or breakfast foods, sugared snacks or drinks, fast foods, healthy foods and drinks, and other, which is kind of like everything else that didn't fit into one of the other categories. Of those, two of the six product groups make up more than half of the ads. That, and these two product categories are toys and cereal slash breakfast foods. Sugared snacks and drinks accounted for another 18.4% of the commercials, and fast food make up another 5.7%. Which means four categories, toys, cereals, sugared snacks, and fast food, make up 80% of the commercials. Sound familiar? 
So basically, things didn't change between the 1990s or, and the 1970s. So I'm curious to see how this plays out in today's children programming. So it's a new year. Let's bring it on and do a content analysis of children's advertising. We'll certainly find out by the end of the semester what kinds of products are being advertised to kids.